Welcome to our review on sounding solids and the ear. First thing we're going to consider then is what happens when a sound wave hits a solid surface. So the easiest way to do this is if you imagine you're standing in a completely empty room and then you shout, what's going to happen initially is you're going to hear an echo. But as time goes on, that echo will fade away and then you'll be back in silence. So the reason behind this then is when you shout initially that sound is reflected off those walls and therefore you get this echo. So it's going to be reflected many times over initially, but it's also going to have a small amount of that sound wave that's absorbed by the particles in the wall. So what we see is the wall particles are going to vibrate gently and therefore the wall does get a little bit hotter. I wouldn't recommend you stand in an empty room shouting at it, holding the wall to see if you can make it heat up. It's not that noticeable. But we do have that initial reflection. And then as the particles are absorbing that sound wave, what we find is that eventually the sound will fade away. So if we then consider the human ear, what we actually have is a whole organ that's designed to detect, amplify and convert sound to an electrical signal. So I've given you a diagram on the right there that shows you all of those key features of the ear itself. The first thing that's going to happen is the outer ear, which is made up of the pinna and the auditory canal, gathers the sound wave and directs it to the eardrum. And then as that sound wave hits the eardrum, it starts to vibrate. So when the eardrum is vibrating, because we've got these three little bones called the ossicles, so the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup, that are resting against it and each other, then the eardrum vibrating leads to the ossicles vibrating. But the way that they work not only vibrates, but they also amplify the vibration. And they then pass it along that little chain of them onto the oval window. And that then moves it into the inner ear. Within the inner ear, we have this structure called the cochlea. Now that's filled with a fluid which is going to transmit the vibrations from the oval window to these small hairs that are located on the cochlear wall. Now the hairs themselves are attached onto sound detecting cells and those sound detecting cells release chemical substances that will then trigger a nerve impulse down the auditory nerve which travels to the brain. So that as the sound is being transmitted through that fluid, it's making the little hairs vibrate they then trigger the chemical substance to be released. The nerve impulse is sent down the auditory nerve to your brain. And then your brain being a very clever little organ is going to process that signal and you hear the sound. The last thing we're going to consider is what we actually call the auditory range. So the range of sounds that we can hear as an individual. In order to do this, we need to know two definitions. First one is the natural frequency, which is the frequency at which an object oscillates if it's displaced. And the easiest way to think about this is something you've probably all done in class at one point or another, where you've got a ruler, put it just off the edge of the desk, hit it so it starts vibrating. And then as you slide it further in, then the vibrations change. So what we have there is the natural frequency. So we've displaced it and then we've got a frequency that will change depending on its length. Second definition we've got is the resonance, which is the large amplitude oscillation that happens when you make something oscillate at its natural frequency. So when we try and relate those into what's happening inside our ear, we've got those little hairs inside our cochlea, but they're not all one length. We've got all those little hairs at different lengths. Therefore, they all resonate at different frequencies. So the range of hair lengths that you've got within your cochlea is going to determine the range of sounds that you can actually hear. So what we find is as you get older, then the shorter hairs that you have are actually lost. And that means that you start to lose the ability to hear those higher frequencies, which is why if your teacher really doesn't like you, they might play a very high frequency sound, which they can't hear because they're old, they've lost those hairs. But you lot are all sitting there holding your ears and wondering what on earth this horrible noise is. Same thing that you can use in shopping centres in order to disperse groups of teenagers. There are also studies that say that listening to loud music can affect the range of frequencies that you can hear because you're damaging those little hairs there. So word of advice, don't have your music too loud. 
Hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe the processes that convert wave disturbances between sound waves and vibrations in our solids, such as in the human ear. You can explain why processes work only over a limited frequency range, and you can explain how that's related to human hearing.